Once you've started to get the hang of navigating with your tablet, it's time to open up Photoshop and really put some of this functionality and pressure sensitivity to work for us. By the way, pressure sensitivity is really one of the, the primary reasons why you probably got a tablet in the first place. It is through this pressure sensitivity that you get more control over your retouching tools and drawing tools in Photoshop. So let's take a look at Photoshop CS4 and understand where we're going to find some of these settings. The interface is pretty radically different, I must say, in CS4. What Adobe's done is they've taken a kind of a bold move in pursuit of a more task-based workflow. And again, you can see this in uh, firsthand as you open the application up here along the top. What we're looking at here is an application bar where uniform viewing options can be found. Here you can quickly switch between various preset workspaces or even custom user-created workspaces. To the left, we'll see a couple of new tools down here. These are primarily designed for some 3D use. Uh, we're not going to touch on those right now, but rather uh, want to just kind of make a little loop around the interface and, and know where some of the tools are at. What we're going to be focusing on right now is this paintbrush option. Moving over to the right-hand side of our screen, you'll see that we've got what are called now panels as opposed to palettes. And the reason why they're called panels is because much of the functionality that you would normally find in dialog boxes through menus up here along the top or through some of the various traditional palettes in the past are now, again, visible firsthand right within the panel. So what we're going to do is focus on brushes. As I mentioned before, brushes is really what I consider the heart of the application. So where do we find these? Well, for starters, we can select the brush panel icon right on the options bar, or we could also go under window and then select brushes. And then we can also use the keyboard shortcut F5. So let's go ahead and open up some of our brushes. This happens to be the default view that we're looking at here and it's kind of broken down into a couple different sections. I'm going to walk you through this. What I have selected is brush presets. This will show me various brush presets that Adobe has defined for us. We can start with these or we can create our own, but we'll touch on that portion a little bit later. Underneath brush presets, we have brush tip shape. And this, as its name suggests, is where you can adjust the tip of your brush. For example, rotating it or making it more of an oval or oblong, and that's kind of hard to see with a small brush there, but we'll come back to that a little bit later on. Finally, below brush tip shape, we have various dynamics, and this is where, really where the, the meat of the panel comes into play. The dynamics can be adjusted, for example, by tapping on shape dynamics using pen pressure to control the size. But again, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Let's do this. Let's go back to brush presets and then take a look at the brushes themselves. Now, as I mentioned before, this is the default view. Uh, this is giving us an opportunity to look at a preview of what that particular brush would look like. As I select 27 pixel soft round brush, in the lower portion of the panel, we see a preset or a preview, I should say, of what that brush would look like. But what I'd rather do is take a look at my brushes in a slightly different view. So in the upper right hand corner, what I'm going to do is select expanded view as it is already checked, but I want to look at stroke thumbnail. What this does is enable me to look at each of the individual brushes with an automated preview right here in the front. That way I don't necessarily have to select it in order to get that preview down here. This really is a matter of preference, but I find that when I'm drawing and painting and retouching in Photoshop that this is a much more appropriate view for my liking. So experiment with some of these different views by going up under the brushes menu and then coming down here and you can see that you've got various views here. You can also load various sets of brushes. I'm going to be focusing on the default set right now, but again, experiment with some of these different brushes and some of these different presets. So what do I mean when I say that the brushes panel is the heart of Photoshop when it comes to using a tablet? Well, again, it is where you set various dynamics to be controlled using pen pressure. So let's do this. I've got a blank document open right now, and I'm going to go to Brush Presets, and I'm going to select a nice uh, soft round, 65 pixel soft round brush. That particular brush has presets set so that shape dynamics is turned on and control is set for pen pressure. 
Well, I'm going to turn that off for a second by clicking the little checkbox next to Shape Dynamics. Then I'm going to minimize the Brushes panel by clicking on the Brushes panel icon in the Options bar. And I'm just going to draw a stroke of color across the screen. Now what you're seeing here is basically the same thing that I would get if I were using a mouse. When I would click that button, it's on or it's off. It's all or nothing. However, when I go back to the Brushes panel and I turn Shape Dynamics back on, and incidentally, if you noticed here, to turn Shape Dynamics back on, I didn't just check the checkbox right next to the words. Rather, I tapped on the words Shape Dynamics. Tapping on the words is going to show me my options to the right of those dynamics, and it is there that I can make sure that I have control specifically set for pen pressure. Now, if I did not have a tablet and I set my control for pen pressure, what I would get is this little exclamation point right here that essentially would say, well, you got to have a tablet if you want this option to be turned on. So again, what you're getting here is functionality that goes untapped or unused if you're not using a tablet. So why not get one if you don't already have one? All right. So again, I've got Shape Dynamics turned on, control set for pen pressure. I'm going to minimize that brushes panel one more time. And now what I'm going to do is vary the amount of pressure I place with my tablet, pressing light and gradually pressing a little bit harder. In this case, you see that my brush stroke varies from very thin to very thick. That was all adjusted based on how hard I physically press my pen to the tablet. I'm going to go back to that brushes panel once more. And this time, I'm going to uncheck Shape Dynamics, and I'm going to tap on the words Other Dynamics. Now, it's within Other Dynamics that we find controls for opacity. Before I do that, if you look in the Brush Preview window, you will see that my brush has no variance in line width, color, or opacity. It simply goes as a soft edge from one width to the very same width to the right-hand side. When I select Pen Pressure, to control opacity for both opacity and flow, I get a really nice soft edge, uh, a fully dark portion of the, of the brush stroke, and then another light version as well. So once again, let me minimize this, and in the same exact motion that I did the stroke right up here, I'm going to adjust the amount of physical pressure from light to heavy as I drag my pen across the tablet. So what I'm doing here is I'm using pen pressure to adjust the opacity of my brush. Once again, pen pressure being one of the primary reasons why it is that people use tablets for retouching and drawing in Photoshop. So you can see just how important that brushes panel is. So let's go back up to that brushes panel once more in review. Under brush presets, you'll find the predefined brushes that Adobe has created. Under brush presets, we find brush tip shape. This is where you're going to modify a brush. For example, taking this uh, diameter, putting on a 45 degree, and now giving me a, more of a tapered edge. You'll notice in the brush preview window that we're starting to see a little bit of a variance there. It goes from nice soft edges to somewhat of a hard edge, and pretty solid right there in the center. If I were to drag this hardness up, it's going to harden the sides of the edges, or the, the edges of the brush. So I drag that back down and select spacing, you'll see that it starts to spread out. Let me move this back out here. You see essentially what a brush is, is a vector shape. And by adjusting the spacing, we can adjust how that shape looks as it's repeated across the path. So again, this is an excellent way to modify your brushes right here. And Colin's going to go into a couple of different tips on creating your own brushes and then saving them out as well. But let's go back over here to brush tip shape and then take a look at some of these dynamics once more. Well, actually, let me select a nice soft round brush again. So again, that one had shape dynamics turned on. We've got a couple of others here that I'll focus on. Scattering, color dynamics, and other dynamics, those four being the four attributes that you can use pen pressure to control. For example, color dynamics, set it for pen pressure. Scattering, once again, you can set that for pen pressure. These are really nice when you want to create uh, a kind of a nice stylized look or more of a natural media brush. So again, 
bro the brushes palette is really what I consider the heart of the application. If you're using a tablet, make sure you spend some time here. This is the single greatest area within the application that you're going to be able to control things, again, such as shape, opacity, scattering, and color using pen pressure.